We welcome you back to the 2012 Final Four. Ohio State and Kansas about to collide, and we'll find out the winner. Take on Kentucky come Monday night for the national championship. Welcome back, friends. Jim Nance along with Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr. Listen, let's get this out of the way right away. Mr. Buckeye over here. I'll be watching you here tonight, okay? I know you will. So I'm going to let you talk about Ohio State. Steve Kerr, go ahead. Excellent team at both ends of the floor. They need Jared Sullinger to stay out of foul trouble. That's been an issue. The key guy, I think, in the matchup, though, today is Deshaun Thomas. He, uh, he really provides a lot of problems for Kansas, and he is the leading scorer in this tournament today. This Jayhawks team beat North Carolina in the regional final. What do you see in Kansas? Thomas Robinson has not played at his normal level in the tournament, but I think the key guy is going to be Elijah Johnson. He's a guy that has been excellent in the tournament. He's explosive, can shoot the three, and also can get to the rim. He's got to be at a high level for Kansas. This looks very evenly matched going into it. Can't wait to see it. National semifinal number two coming up here on CBS. We are live following William Buford onto the floor. The Ohio State Buckeyes, the East Regional Champions. Ready to face the Kansas Jayhawks. Let's get a report now from Tracy Wolfson. Thanks a lot, Jim. When you talk about the intriguing matchup between Aaron Kraft and Tyshawn Taylor, well, Ohio State's Lenzel Smith said it best. He said, Kraft doesn't just steal basketballs, he steals souls. And when Tyshawn was asked if he's ever had his soul stolen, he said, never. And I don't plan on changing that now. Kraft certainly will try and frustrate Tyshawn out here tonight. But what Bill Self said, would be key is for Tyshawn Taylor to just play his game and not do too much, guys. All right, Tracy, good point. There are so many interesting matchups in this one. And here's how they got here. First, Ohio State. Again, coming out of the East. First, low of Maryland. Then Gonzaga. That was quite a feisty game. And then Cincinnati in the Sweet 16. And how about that matchup with Syracuse? Coach Dad Mata bringing the Buckeyes back to the Final Four. He had them in 2007 down in Atlanta, lost in the championship game to Florida. Here is Kansas through Detroit. Coach McCallum's team, he beat. Then Purdue, and I think Purdue had a great shot at him. And how about the blocks by Withy against NC State? He had 10 blocks in that game. And then taking out North Carolina. Coach Self coming back to the Final Four for the first time since 2008, and Kansas has just come onto the floor here. It's the third time Kansas has uh, made a Final Four here to New Orleans. There have only been five in New Orleans. They've been in three of them here. They met back on December 10th. That was the day when Indiana beat Kentucky, and Kentucky had been number one. Ohio State was number two. There's Sullinger in jeans and a sweater. Back spasms out of the game down at Allen Fieldhouse. What was the difference in this game, guys? Well, it basically came down to the inability of Ohio State to knock down some good shots. And Kansas got timely shot making in a career high from Young in that particular game. What's the difference in my mind? What is it like when you come onto this stage, a setting this big for the very first time? You've been waiting all day long. It's got to be difficult, but I think you're ready to go. I mean, you're ready for the game to get started because at the end of the day, it's basketball. Coming up, we'll introduce you to the starting lineups and tip game number two on CBS. Welcome back, friends, to New Orleans. We're going to sync it up inside for tonight's starting lineups. Appearing in their 11th Final Four, their first since 2007. They are the Big Ten regular season co-champions. And let's meet the Ohio State Buckeyes. Ohio State, 
Davis, that's a like. Right down the middle. And he's getting it done. How about crap? Oh, the kid. Wow. Buford. What a shot. Sullinger, just too strong. Starting tonight for the Ohio State Buckeyes at forward, a sophomore from Columbus, Ohio, number zero, Jared Sullinger. At forward, a sophomore from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number one, Deshaun Thomas. At guard, a sophomore from Finley, Ohio, number four, Aaron Kraft. At guard, a sophomore from Zion, Illinois, number 32, Lenzel Smith, Jr. And at guard, a senior from Toledo, Ohio, number 44, William Buford. And now, after winning their eighth consecutive Big 12 Conference regular season championship, they are appearing in their 14th Final Four. Here are the Kansas Jayhawks. Hey, you! Oh, let's go! Taylor Ellis! Holds on. Nice. Checks it down. <laughs> Starting tonight for the Kansas Jayhawks. At forward, a junior from Washington, D.C., number zero, Thomas Robinson. At center, a junior from San Diego, California, number five, Jeff Withy. At guard, a senior from Hoboken, New Jersey, number 10, Tyshawn Taylor. At guard, a junior from Las Vegas, Nevada, number 15, Elijah Johnson. And at guard, a junior from Kansas City, Missouri, number 24, Travis Relaford. And introducing the head coaches for Ohio State in his eighth season for the Buckeyes, Thad Mata. For Kansas in his ninth season for the Jayhawks, Bill Self. All right, guys, I like this matchup. I've been waiting to see this one while wow. Kentucky <laughs> Louisville got most of the attention all week long. This one should be really special. Well, these teams are evenly matched, in my opinion. You've seen Kansas yep. a lot here recently, Steve. Give me your take on what to expect from well, your vantage point. You know, the interesting thing, Clark, is that they've really struggled to score until the Carolina game mm -hmm. in that regional final. And I think what I'm looking for is can they get enough shooting between Tyshawn Taylor and T. Han off the bench, Elijah Johnson. Taylor's 0 for 17 from right. the three-point line in this tournament. I think Carolina's going to, or excuse me, I think Kansas is going to need to make five or six threes in this game to loosen up that Ohio State defense. Well, you take away that 0 of 17 for Tyshawn Taylor. He'd been way over 40% on three-point <laughs> shooting. So, 
you've got to figure the percentages are going to work back to yeah. his favor at some point. Yeah, and over the hasn't. course of the regular season, he's shot he the ball terrific. extremely well. And he's been 21 of 35 on two-point field yes. goals. But he's going against the best defensive player, I think, in the country, perimeter-wise, in Aaron Kraft. And Kenny Smith talked about it in the pregame show. That matchup will be something to watch. And perhaps will be the, the bellwether for who wins this game. Well, it'll certainly be worthy of an isolated camera. So, too, will the Sullinger matchup. Kansas does a good job of double-teaming the post. It'll be interesting to see if they get it out of Sullinger's hands by trying to employ that defensive tactic. And with the able to tap it back to Taylor to get things started. Jamie Lucky, Tom Eads, and Patrick Adams draw the assignment to officiate this game. Now low they go to Robinson. No double team on that particular catch. Thomas trying to defend him, and the jumper perfect for Robinson to open it. Now you see, Sollinger and Robinson will not guard each other. Thomas is matched up with Thomas Robinson, and at this end of the floor, that's a problem. Rashawn Thomas can take him inside and out. It'll be a challenge for Kansas to keep its two big players, Withy and Robinson, on the floor tonight. That's Sullinger taking Withy to the paint, and he blocks the first shot. Sullinger thought there was contact. But there was contact both ways, Jim, and a good job by the officials to play on. Robinson too strong with the left hand, and Buford able to snag it. For the Buckeyes, excellent. here is Buford. Excellent execution, though, for Kansas. Getting that ball swung side to side. That's the way they like to play. You'll often hear Bill Self mention, we want to get the ball to the second or third That's side. Right. That's one of his pet phrases, yeah. isn't it? And the reason is it gives Robinson a chance to get position down low. I don't like that shot for Taylor. Robinson missing the short put back as Taylor trying to get off the snide with an early three. Again, the work at the Sollinger, and Robinson comes in, reaches in. Boy, cheap foul there for Thomas Very Robinson. Much so I agree with you, Steve. No reason with he has Sullinger in good, under good control. No reason for Robinson to come in and reach and commit the foul. See, with he had him in good position. And, and keep in mind, this is a Kansas team that really only has two bigs, right. the starters. You know, they'll come off the bench. Usually with Kevin Young, who will play kind of a small four position, maybe Justin Wesley, but foul trouble could be a factor for either team tonight. They're saying the foul was on Relaford, is the, oh. the official stats. How do you figure? I think they'll go back and correct that. I didn't see Relaford anywhere in the play. No, I nor did I. And here is the three by Smith, and there is an X factor right there. I agree, Jim. He was the, the key guy in that Syracuse win, hitting the big shots in the second half. And I think the shooting by both William Buford and Smith Jr. would be huge here for Ohio State. Well, Smith Jr.'s numbers are up considerably in tournament play as Sullinger able to challenge with the inside. Smith shooting 47%. Sullinger at three point yeah. line. Hits the turnaround shot over Whitley. You know, Whitley likes to block shots from the weak side. I don't know if he's as good of a shot blocker on the ball. Sullinger will try to take it, take the ball into Whitley's body just so he can create some space. Taylor, tough shot. Kraft is right there. Back outside, Johnson. Off the floor with it, it's Lenzel Smith Jr. Thomas, back of the rim for the second time. Kansas has hit one of its first seven shots. The opening jumper by Robinson, who has it at the top of the key. That's a two. Kansas is a little quick on a couple of those shot opportunities, Jim. Matter of fact, both teams have been looking at the basket fairly quickly here in the early going. Thomas trying to save it, but right into the hands of Withy. And I think some of that just being anxious to finally get out here and play. And the basket counts. Oh, oh that's going to go the other way. It's going to be a charge on Taylor. No basket. Let's take a look coming right at you from up top. Aaron Kraft, excellent defensive position.
Terrific job by Kraft to move his feet, square his body up, keep his feet on the floor. Well done against a guy in Tyshawn Taylor who typically can get all the way to the rim in that situation. Well, that's what he did against Carolina. That's how he was able to break out of his slump. He got some easy hoops in transition, and then he was able to shoot over the smaller Carolina guards. I don't know if he'll be able to do that against Aaron Kraft here tonight. Kevin Young already on the floor, replacing Thomas Robinson. Buford bangs home the bucket. 7-2, Ohio State. Scoring seven unanswered. And a timeout is called by Kansas. We were taking issue with the foul call on Relaford instead of Thomas Robinson. And well, this is Relaford highlighted here with our virtual madness. And it's Robinson reaching in. Relaford nowhere near it. It's been confirmed. They called the foul, as you see. Robinson actually hits him in the face. The foul has not been changed, and that would have been one early against Robinson. How was that possible? I'm not sure <laughs> how that happened. Well, that's a major play. You know, I thought Thomas Robinson looked a little out of sorts in the early going. In fact, Bill Self has put him on the bench. I thought he took a couple of quick shots in that cheap foul that wasn't called. He's trying to settle his star down right now. Oh, Kraft almost had the he steal. He was right in the passing lane. That ball squirted through, luckily. Kevin Young's on the floor for Kansas, number 40. Here he is. Had a big game against Ohio State in December. Down low, two points. Elijah Johnson breaks a four-minute stretch without any points at all for the Jayhawks. And Johnson's been outstanding in the tournament. 14 points a game. 50% shooting, and he's made nine of 23s. He's made the big ones, too. Yep, huge three against Carolina. Another bigger, big one against Purdue. This is a pretty good defensive lineup on the floor, Steve, for Kansas. Just one big, and that's Whitney. He's going to play one-on-one -on -one with Sullinger. A little dig help by Young. And Thomas unable to knock down the shot, and Buford stepped on the baseline. Thomas is off early. He's had a huge tournament. So it'll be Kansas ball when we come back. Sullinger and the Buckeyes with the early lead at 7-4. Jim Nance with Steve Kirk, Clark Kellogg, and Tracy Wolfson with more on that mystery foul call. Yeah, that's right, Jim. I had a chance to speak with John Adams during the break, and he told me that foul call is not reviewable. They can review a foul call to see who should take the free throws, but they can't review it to see who the foul was called on, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. John Adams is the NCAA director of officials. Now, I did see the officials go over to the alternate official during this break and they may be in fact trying to change this now realizing this was a this was an egregious mistake early because it changes the way you play the game yeah, if it's on robinson well, keep in mind it may have been a miscommunication when they signaled that the foul to two. the to the officials on the sidelines they, they don't have to review it if it was just a miscommunication that's right so i think we will see that robinson perhaps will uh, and it's such a big play yeah, because exactly. Robinson, again, one of the only two bigs on this roster. We saw what happened with Kentucky in the first half when Kid Gilchrist went to the bench and played only six minutes in that first half. So, hey, they just changed it. They just made the announcement here, and they have changed it back to Robinson. So, the steal made by Sullinger. Robinson not on the floor now. You saw him go over and talk to Bill Self about it. Buford, Relaford reached in. And then coming back after he had it taken away, Buford commits the foul. You know, Jim, I think Bill Self is very comfortable with this lineup defensively because he gets to match up with Deshaun Thomas at the other end with exactly. Kevin Young, and he keeps his shot blocker on the That's floor right. with Whitby against Sullinger. Question, though, Clark, is can they score without Thomas Robinson on the floor? Well, right. that to be determined, and this guy can get to the rim, but he overshoots it. Tyshawn Taylor. Whitby with the steal and the jam, and Robinson is ready to check back into the Jayhawks lineup. 
with him with one of those uh, beach volleyball moves that he credits for being such a difference maker as a shot blocker growing up in San Diego and playing a lot of beach volleyball before he's a basketball player down at Mission Beach. Yeah, yeah. timing and being able to jump quickly without putting your hands down is part of what allows him to be a good shot blocker, and that's what you just saw there, Jim. He just was in the way of Sullender trying to make that outlet pass and retrieved it for the dunk. Can you imagine Withy as a middle blocker in yeah. volleyball? <laughs> that would be With that length? Yes. And he's pretty quick laterally, too, able to slide his feet awfully well. Kraft back out high, Sullinger stepping in. Kraft will take the jumper, he hits it. Good play by Jared Sullinger to not try to force it, use the dribble to draw defenders and get Kraft an open jump shot there. Kraft a selective three-point shooter. He was just two for eight in the tournament to this point. But he'll look for them in the half court. In and out for Robinson. That's a good look for Kansas, though, when he's able to catch it in the sweet spot of the low post. Kraft out of the Sullinger. Perfect pass bounced in there for the assist, and Sullinger has two more. You know, Ohio State has been the much more impressive team in the tournament offensively, and I think you see that rhythm and that pace that they've been playing with. Kansas, other than the Carolina game, has really struggled to score the ball. That one circles the rim and drops for Relaford. Well, to your point, Steve, 41% shooting, and again, that factors in the outstanding game that Kansas had against North Carolina. So before that, really struggling to shoot in only 24% from the three-point line in the tournament so far for Kansas. Well, that was a big one by Relaford, the three. Sure was. They're going to need a few surprise threes from wing players tonight. Thomas now 0 for 4 to begin this one. The man who had 31 in the first round game against Lowell in Maryland. And that's going against Johnson as Kraft does what he does so well. Second time he's drawn the charge already. His lateral quickness is tremendous. His toughness is unquestioned. And when he's able to get into his ball handler, he really makes it tough for you to get the advantage yeah. in beating him. It was interesting talking to Bill Self yesterday. He said the advantage of having played Ohio State one time before is that our guys really understand how quick Aaron Kraft is. He said before that game, we, we knew he was good. But our guards didn't really feel Kraft. And Tyshawn Taylor had seven turnovers in that game. And I think Johnson and Taylor will be much more careful with the ball around Kraft this time around. Smith sits. They bring out Scott. Freshman Shannon Scott gives it back to Buford. Relaford was ready to reach in and come up with another steal. Something he does on a regular basis. Fade away, Sullinger. And it's tapped back out to Relaford. Look at this battle down low. Thomas trying to guard Robinson. Withy able to chase it down, and he took steps. Got a break in the action. Kansas shooting only 31%. Self, you've come a long way. You won a national championship. You were here 25 years ago when the Final Four was played here, here for the National Coaches Convention, and this is where he sat. He pointed this out to me yesterday during the practice. Second row from the top, all the way up in the corner, you can see that approximate area, and this was his view. Got a little better seat today. <laughs> he said, uh, 25 years later. He was an assistant at that time for Oklahoma State. Under Eddie Sutton, who of course would go on to coach Kentucky. Here is uh, Sam Thompson on the floor, number 12. We haven't actually seen, I had Scott on the floor earlier. It's Thompson out here first off the bench. It's Sullinger, and with he thought he had a clean play. That'll be the first foul on the seven-footer for Kansas. I don't think they gave it to Withy. I think it may have been Tehan, Jim. Oh, maybe not. It is on T hand. So 
Sullinger at the line. He averages almost nine free throws a game during the tournament. Interesting thing with both Sullinger and Thomas Robinson, they, they each struggle with length, you know, and, and so they both really have to get position mm -hmm. before they get the ball right. in order to give themselves the best chance to score. But I think Bill Self likes this with the matchup. You can see the length on Sullinger has bothered him to this point. That's going to Kansas. Coach Self, that's an amazing thing to win eight straight Big 12 regular season titles. It really is. I mean, it's actually quite remarkable because it's conference play is the toughest type of play you have because teams are so familiar with your tendencies, strengths, and weaknesses. Taylor, no. He's now missed his last 22 shots from three point territory going back to the Big 12 tournament. And think about who played in the Big 12 during those eight straight. Title for Bill Self as Buford knocks down the three, but Big 12, pretty good conference. Had to go against Blake Griffin, Kevin Durant, Michael Beasley, and no matter who Kansas has put out on the floor, they've been they've been able to, to dominate that conference. Just an amazing run for Bill Self. Buford, meanwhile, the fourth all-time scorer in Buckeye history, hits a three. Relaford on the drive and cuts it back down to five. Relaford providing a, a big boost. Offensively, I mean, he really has not done much offensively in this tournament. Just two for 11 from the three-point line. We already saw him knock down a three, and there's a nice drive to the hoop. Well, Kansas has to get the offense from somewhere. Robinson had a couple of good looks early that didn't go down, and the Buckeyes trying to attack with him. If you're selling, you know, you don't want to settle for a fadeaway. You want to try to get into that shot blocker and maybe get yourself to the free throw line. Here's Robinson. Way off on the short shot. You see, even with Deshaun Thomas, he, he struggles to get that shot over the top. You'd think he'd have a big advantage over Thomas, but really not. Buford, he hits it from the same spot. Back-to-back -back threes for Buford. Clark, you've watched this team an awful lot. Is he the X factor with for Ohio State? Because he hasn't played to the level he's capable of, except on a few occasions this season. This time, Thomas is called for the shove. Aaron Kraft, guys, what have you seen so far? Well, just the good quickness defensively, Jim, and we've seen it all season long from this young man. Defensive player of the year in the Big Ten. This is a guy who understands how to stay in front of people. He's got the physical attributes, but he's also got the mindset and the tenacity, and his conditioning level is superb. You never see him tired as much pressure as he applies to the opposing team's ball handlers. After the first foul on Thomas, Tehan blocked by Thompson. Taylor will drive it in and gets the two-point shot. Thought about the three, but then went for the two. Looked like Ohio State went with a little zone out of bounds underneath, mm -hmm. and that allowed Taylor to finally get Kraft off his back. He ended up with a different matchup. Had Sullinger on him accident, actually, and able to take advantage and he's one for five now after a slow start I think Taylor has to think about trying to stay within the two-point area and then maybe get a three later because he struggled so much from there Thompson comes back out with it five on the shot clock Ravenel on the floor for the Buckeyes Kraft tough shot hits a jumper for the second time but that was late in the shot clock off the dribble against pretty good defensive pressure. And that's something Aaron Kraft has looked to do a little more of, guys. Assert himself offensively. Young down low, pinned underneath to the corner. Tehan off the front of the rim. Young saves it. Young is an excellent offensive rebounder. Wild shot. But there's Young again. Clean block by Sullinger. Young driving in and going the other way. They've drawn another charge. This time it's the freshman from Chicago, Thompson. He had a block shot. And now able to draw the foul on Kansas. Ohio State up eight.
21-13 Ohio State. What have you seen so far, Steve? Well, amazing how well Ohio State has played offensively without Deshaun Thomas, their leading scorer in the tournament, even with a hoop, but it's been the three-point shooting that has carried them. Four for eight so far. Lenzel Smith, Kraft, Buford, everybody getting into the act. And this has been a theme for Ohio State in this tournament, shooting 38%. They've made 26 out of 68, and they've picked up where they've left off. If they can get Thomas going now offensively, they will really have Kansas in trouble defensively. Well, recently, Ohio State has gotten contribution from a lot of different players at different times. Thomas has been doing it all at the offensive end, 22 points a game coming into tonight's game. But Lindsell Smith has stepped up. So has Kraft and Sullinger. So they found ways to get points from other people. There is Thomas with the three. They're fifth of the first half. And Kansas now has seen its largest deficit of the tournament matched. Was down 11 at one time to Purdue. And if this is what we see tonight, half-court offense from Kansas, they're in trouble. They have to get out in transition in order to score. Thomas right, at the Steve. other end. They just have not been effective operating in the half court not knocking down perimeter shots and when they can drive it and get to that pain area to create shots they really have struggled in the tournament Thomas this is a two tap Sullinger tap again and finally it's Johnson no numbers advantage though as the Buckeyes had three back Robinson hit that opening basket, missed his last five. With it. That was stripped by Thompson. Thompson reached back and knocked it away. Sixth turnover by Kansas as Kraft comes up short. Put back good by Thomas. And timeout, Kansas. Buckeyes have doubled up the Jayhawks here in the first half. Kentucky on to the championship game for the 11th time. Second to UCLA. In title game appearances. Ohio State and Kansas meeting for the first time ever in an NCAA tournament game. That's a shocking stat right there. Only the second matchup of two seeds, of two number two seeds yeah. in the semis. You'd think that would happen pretty frequently. But right now, only the Buckeyes look like a legitimate yeah. two seed based on the performance so far. Crisp execution, shot making, and the Jayhawks struggling to get anything that resembles an offensive rhythm. To Thomas and just out of reach. And Lindsell Smith says, that's on me. The women's Final Four begins tomorrow from Denver. Game one features two conference rivals, Notre Dame and UConn, while top-seeded Baylor battles Stanford in game two. Coverage begins on ESPN, 6.30 p.m. For more information on the women's championship, go to NCAA.com. All four one seeds in the women's Final Four. Here's Relifer. He's been the only productive offensive player, and that's Kevin Young again drawing a foul because of his activity in pursuing the missed shot. Young had eight rebounds against North Carolina. Did not score in that game, but was a huge factor for Bill Self defensively and on the glass. And creates an extra possession for the Jayhawks there. That is the second foul on Buford. So Thompson takes his spot on the floor. Here is Taylor. That was a tough shot. And Taylor has now hit his last two. Well, Jim, he's capable of making tough shots. He gets good elevation. The key for him is to make sure he takes more high-quality shots than tough ones. When he does that, he's a hard guy to defend. Nice look by Thomas. Sullinger rattles it home. Big time finish by Jared Sullinger, but I like the pass there. Yeah. Sat down, beautiful angle, got it inside to Sullinger in rhythm, and Jared did the rest. And Kansas throws it away. You know, Whitby is not a player who's really going to take advantage of deep post position. Kansas has looked for him a couple times down there, but doesn't really have the base strength-wise with his legs to catch and finish underneath the basket, particularly against somebody like Sullinger. 
Seven baskets by Kansas in eight turnovers. That's a recipe for a double-digit deficit, for sure. Well, they got here with their defense. They only played one good game offensively in this tournament. We're going to see an offensive foul on Ravenel, I believe. But Kansas is going to have to rely more than on its defense tonight. They're going to have to find some unexpected scoring from somebody on this roster. And that's right. I think Connor Tehan is capable at the three-point line, although he struggled only 3 of 15 in the tournament coming into tonight's game. You see the shooting percentage for Kansas in the first half. Again, North Carolina, the exception to dismal first half field goal shooting. Got it in over the top, and Robinson's back on the board. Second made field goal. After opening the game with one, his first basket since 25 seconds into this one. I think he's going to have to be dominant in this game for Kansas to win. He's the one advantage they have physically, particularly when he goes against Deshaun Thomas. But to this point, Robinson has not been able to use that, that advantage. Coming up, AT&T at the half. Greg Gumbel, Greg Anthony, Seth Davis, Kenny Smith, and Charles Barkley are going to break down the first half. And they're going to talk live with John Calipari and Anthony Davis. And a Naismith watch presented by AT&T. It's all coming up on AT&T at the half. And this is the Kraft family right here. Mom and dad and sister. His sister will be playing for the Buckeyes women's team next year. The sister Katie. Of course, the story there, too, is the brother, his brother Brandon, deployed to Afghanistan just last weekend. His older brother, such a strong influence and role model for Aaron. Thomas Robinson now matched up with Sullinger. Five on the shot clock. Kraft, he beat the shot clock once. That never touched the rim, and it's going back the other way anyway with Young. That ball was deflected by the Buckeyes. We've got the under four timeout, and it's still an 11-point lead for Ohio State. I'm glad you came. Well, the tradition, unlike any other, just a few days away, Masters Live will stream exclusive video of Amen Corner 15 and 16 and featured group. For more, go to cbssports.com slash masters and masters.com. Final 336 of the first half. Steve, I go back to what you said a few minutes ago that Thomas Robinson is going to have to become extremely Dominant inside. Good job by Lindsay L. Smith to pull that pumpkin out of traffic for Kansas to have a chance to cut into this deficit. Jared Sullinger took a shot to the face, and Kevin Young going to be whistled for the foul. Yeah, he got he got a pretty good smack in the face there. I agree, Clark. I mean, they can't score enough in the half court unless Robinson really dominates. You look at the numbers: zero transition points for Kansas, zero free throws. So there's just nothing easy, as you see the replay of yeah, inadvertent you know, hand yeah. to the face. Yeah, no elbow there, just an inadvertent hand. The officials will review this, right? But it'd be surprising to see a, a flagrant one called. I can't imagine. But Kansas has to find a way to turn Ohio State over and get out in transition. You know, five turnovers right now for Ohio State. Zero fast break points for Kansas. So you've got to figure out a way to, to break through. Left side of your screen, there you see Kevin Young had his hands up right about chest level, and actually his arms up about chest level, and then inadvertently got Jared Sullinger in the face with, the, with his left hand. Above the shoulders, let's see what they do here. Going to be the second one, second foul on Young. And again, we should remind people anything above the head is pretty much automatically reviewed by the officials. Right, exactly. And they just want to make sure that they don't miss anything. That was the 16 foul on Kansas. The next one equals the bonus. 
And that was Smith soaring through the sky. And he was hit by Elijah Johnson all the way up. Boy, good execution here. Called play, you could see it. Lindsell Smith Jr. showing you his bounce. Able to draw the foul. This young man has been rock solid all year. He's ramped his up and ramped up his point production. There you see what he's done in the tournament. He had three out of six threes against Syracuse. Yep. Such a big difference maker. And also shot nine free throws. That uh -huh. was a career high in terms of attempts and makes with seven. You see a little bandage over his right eye. Three stitches from a shot he took in that game against the Orange. So the lead's back to 13. Kansas has not even shot a free throw in this game. You know, we've got to mention, too, that Ohio State is an excellent defensive team. They're rotating well. Guys are moving on the pass. And they're really trying to get in the chest and face of Thomas Robinson whenever he catches it down in the low post. And Kansas doing a nice job moving the ball, swinging it side to side like they like to do. But to this point, you know, they just haven't been able to take advantage of Robinson's position down there. They're converging and collapsing on Robinson as he catches the ball, making things very difficult for him. Second foul. I'm sorry, Jim. You have second foul on Thompson. Need to make note of that as Robinson scores off the glass. Thirty to nineteen. Good balance being displayed by Ohio State here in this first half. And Smith short with the shot. Oh, and thrown away again. It's like Kansas is so anxious to get out and get something easy exactly. that they force the the issue on that one. Yep, you're exactly right, Steve. Nine turnovers against Kansas. Let's see if Ohio State comes down now. That shot by Lindsell Smith Jr., the last possession. A little quick, considering score and time. You want to try to move the defensive can. Oh, nice drive by Jared Sullinger, but I think he stepped on the baseline. He did. He was on the baseline, and that's the sixth turnover on the Buckeyes. What about Sullinger's play so far, Clark? Well, he's been solid. The big guy knows how to use his body. He's got a nice touch. Good active defense there. Breaking contact, tough finish. But his presence really elevates the confidence level of this team, and it gives them another option, a big-time option, in terms of when you need a basket if you want to go inside with it. Seven points, four rebounds for Jared. And look at Thompson. Out battle the Jayhawks and come away with it with 148 to play in the half. Thompson, a very active live body for the Buckeyes. Doesn't produce a lot of points, but gives them good activity. There is Thompson with a swish. And the Kraft family salutes the Buckeyes. This one will be on Thomas, and that'll be his second. That Mata, number six. Yeah, Thad Mata is going to go to his bench to get Thomas out of there to avoid that third foul. He'll go with Ravenel. Thomas, it's been a frustrating first half for him. He missed some shots early, but did get a couple to go. That last one right there, you can see the kind of problems he can cause for the Jayhawks. Nice turnaround shot, and Robinson now starting to get going here. He's got eight. He's been named the National Player of the Year by one poll. Of course, Anthony Davis of Kentucky taking all the rest of the honors. We're going to be seeing Anthony Davis at halftime up on the set. Boy, he was absolutely spectacular in that first game here tonight, Wasn't Jim. he? He'll make some low post moves on Barkley at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> See if Sir Charles can handle him. There is And that's on Tehan, his second. Set him to the line. Follow social media activity from tonight's game. Get live scores or watch live on your computer or mobile device with NCAA March Madness Live. Go to NCAA.com slash March Madness for more information.
tough call there on Tehan. I'm not sure he fouled him, but Smith gets the call, goes to the line. Meanwhile, Fat Mata basically uses the break here as a pseudo timeout. Yeah, he calls all of his players over to the huddle. He doesn't put anybody up rebounding. Wants to make sure they close this final 42 seconds of the half the right way. And Smith gets them both. Four big free throws for Lindell Smith Jr. here to keep the Buckeyes comfortable with the double-digit lead. Well, look at Sam Thompson really pressuring Rutherford. And Ravenel just playing center field, not really guarding with the trying to clog that lane. And that call will be against Kraft. A little too close, they say, and that's his first. And it puts Kansas on the free throw line. Yeah, one and one. Although the Jayhawks have not been that proficient at the line. Just haven't had any chances, though, in this one. Right. right. This will be their first one. One and one for Taylor with 23 seconds to go in the half. Taylor, an only, only a 68% shooter on the year from the line. Woo. Nothing wrong with that one, though. I'll tell you what, Kansas has to just want to hurry up and get to this halftime break and see if the Jayhawks can regroup because they started the game, I thought, really anxious yeah. and out of kilter and never found any kind of steady flow or rhythm. Credit Ohio State for idling down much quicker. Well, and Aaron Kraft completely controlling the tempo. Very efficient offensively handling this Kansas pressure defense and keeping this pace slow mm -hmm. is totally to Ohio State's advantage. They'll go for the timeout to set up this final shot. But if Kansas can't get out and run, it's going to be a long night. 19 seconds to go in the half. This year, enjoy more madness with Coke Zero. Text 2013 to 2653 for a chance to win a trip to next year's NCAA Men's Final Four. They bring in Buford, Clark. Well, they want to call this play, and you want to have one of your best perimeter shooters on the floor for you. Thomas has two fouls, so Thad Mata electing to keep him on the bench, but with Lindell Smith Jr., Sullinger, Kraft, Thompson, and Buford. Perhaps a little staggered screen. Buford excellent coming off down screens and curling into his jump shot. Now with 10 seconds to go in the half. Kraft taking on Taylor, driving in, and caught underneath. Midcourt with two seconds. Taylor inside, Rutherford in time. What a boost going to the locker room. Oh, they made it by a fraction. Kraft went a little early on that drive, and that allowed Kansas just enough time. Look at the block from Withy. Great defense there, maintaining his ground. And then let's watch this. Does he get it off in time? Relaford really extending. And that is close, but it looks like it counts. Yeah, uh, maybe a tenth, maybe two tenths. <laughs> and they but pull enough. it off, yes. That was an excellent yep. block, as you said, Steve, by Withy. Fad might have thought Kraft had gotten fouled, but off that replay, it was a clear, clearly a good block. And just by a whisker and a big basket. Let's go over to Tracy Wolfson. Bad, a big basket at the end there, but still Kansas is shooting just 34%. How have you been able to disrupt them offensively? Uh, you know, we, we've been active, and, and uh, we, we've done a good job being where we're supposed to be. We've given them some easy ones. Played right there. I mean, Aaron got, I thought he got fouled there. Leads to two points at the other end, but, um, you know, we, we got to keep playing. we got to stay active. You know, uh, Young's hurting us on the offensive glass, but uh, we know where they're trying to go with the ball. we got to do a good job with it. Thanks a lot. Jim? Thank you, Tracy. It was double digits Sorry. most of that half, but that last basket gets it under 10. We'll set it to Greg Gumbo and the crew, and we continue here at the Final Four on CBS. Biggest lead of that first half for Ohio State was 13 on five separate occasions, but the Jayhawks trim it to nine as we get set for the second half. Jim Nance, Steve Kerr, and Clark Kellogg back here in New Orleans. And, uh, well, that last basket with just uh, two-tenths of a second to go in the half. If the Jayhawks maybe a little momentum here going into the second half. Let's summarize the first half there. Well, it did cut the deficit down to single digits, and you always like to be able to do that if you've been down double digits. Five of ten three-point shooting. Buford made two of those five for Ohio State. Then the turnovers for Kansas exceeding 
the number of made field goals and assists was enough you exactly. And then Darren Kraft was all over the place. Stuff in the stat sheet really had his hands on every part of this game. Meanwhile, for Kansas, they did a pretty decent job getting the ball down into Thomas Robinson. We'll take a look at his shot chart. He made four out of ten shots, mostly in the paint, but he didn't dominate. He was good, not great. No free throws, just three rebounds. I think Ohio State was very comfortable with the defense they played on Robinson in that first half. And Tracy Wolfson joins us again. Tracy. Coach, obviously a disappointing first half. What was the most frustrating part of it for you? Well, we played, I guess, not to lose or something. We were we were very passive on both ends. We never ran, didn't post strong. They beat us to loose balls. And, you know, we missed some bunnies that could have obviously made the game closer. But, you know, on both ends, we just didn't play with enough energy. How important will it be to get more to the free throw line? Well, yeah, we got to shoot a free throw. You know, I guess we shot two that half, but they do a good job playing without fouling. And, and be honest, we did a decent job of that too. But we just got to keep driving the ball, taking the ball inside, and our big guys got to deliver. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you, Tracy. Hard to figure that Kansas, you know, the last two years, number one seeds they had coming into the tournament of the lose to Northern Iowa, a shocker, and then last year. VCU beat them in the regional final. Now this year, you know, a lot, most people are saying it's going to be North Carolina out of that bracket. The Marshall injury. Great performance by Kansas anyway. And here they are at the final four. They're here and now they've got to find a way to bring more energy as Bill talked about. At both ends of the floor, they've got to be able to get something going. They've got to generate some positive momentum for themselves and it's about intensity and energy. We talked about playing loose. It's tough to play loose when you're always in the half court. It's easier when you can get out and run and start having some fun. I think that's the most critical thing in the second half for Kansas, just to get some easy baskets so that they can get that, that loose play that he's talking about. Well, there's an easy basket. Taylor feeds it inside to Robinson. And now that's going back to the first half. Six unanswered for the Jayhawks. Yeah, quick post up that time by Robertson. And you know that's where Kansas wants to go inside to Thomas Robinson. And Thomas with a three rattles out, and it's Whippy snapping out the outlet to Taylor. Over to Rutherford, driving on Buford. And a sloppy pass, but who did a touch last? It's going back to Kansas. Rutherford out of control here. And fortunate that this ball goes off the foot of Deshaun Thomas. Thomas hit his right foot, and Kansas has a chance to cut further into the deficit. Well, I think you go back, right back to Thomas Robinson if you can here. No question. With the smaller Thomas on him, I thought he had a couple that he could have converted in the first half. He's got to do a better job this one. Oh, Robinson should have had that one. Smith. Inside Buford and Kansas. Gonna be whistled for this one. That's not how they draw drew up the three on two fast break at John Wooden basketball camp <laughs> in 1976. <laughs> but somehow they kind of found a way to get the ball to Buford. He'll go to the line. And the third foul on Elijah Johnson. That's a big foul. <laughs> William Buford at the line. He had a good first half, hit a couple of threes. He's had quite a career, and one of the big honors he got. This week, you saw it on the Bridge Show, the Lowe's Senior Class Award. He was one of the nation's finalists for his four-year commitment to not only his basketball team, but to his academics, to his community. A great job, well done by William Buford, who will get his degree in May, graduating in African American Studies. And a huge part of that first half with those perimeter jump shots really softening up the Kansas defense. Well, he was perfect in that first half, Steve. Due for three of three and two of two. Now well, there's another Kansas mistake. They've had a number of these uh, passages sailing way past the intended target and another turnover. That came out of the double of Thomas Robinson. He's not a great passer down there. I think you can send double team help and really confuse him with the rotations defensively. And that's exactly what happened on that one. Sellinger, and it's somehow in the arms of Thomas. Sellinger, back to the man, and what a block by Whitney. His best play of the night. 
His second block, and here comes Johnson driving in for two. Poor transition defense that time as nobody for Ohio State stopped the ball. Tyshawn Taylor's mother, Janelle, celebrating as the Jayhawks are trying to crawl back into this one. Summerger trying again, and he's blocked again. With the trying to stay there, denies again. Behind the back save to Kraft, to Thomas, and a charge on Thomas. That's his third. I tell you what, this possession looked disjointed from the start. There you see the tail end of it. The Sean Thomas clearly pushing off with the right hand, and Thomas Robinson in good defensive position, but Jared Sullinger trying to back down a much taller player, which really gives the advantage to the shot blocker. When you try to back him down, you need to turn and face or get it out quickly and then repost. And this is a big foul because Deshaun Thomas really represented the, the big advantage Ohio State had offensively. Even though he wasn't going, he really had some good looks at the basket. Now Ohio State will be much easier to guard. Oh, Taylor just can't get one to go. From three, another missed shot by the Jayhawks. Could have cut into that seven-point deficit. Ohio State, meanwhile, has missed its last seven from the floor. Buford with his first miss. Ravenel defending. Robinson tapped up with it. Relaford. Well, the Jayhawks starting to come alive in the areas that Bill Self talked about at halftime. Getting the 50-50 balls. Relaford slashing to the basket from Johnson. There's a different energy level, no doubt about it. And the Superdome has come back to life. Timeout, Ohio State. Kansas and a second half rally down to five. Well, it started with this basket from Robinson, and then it was the Kansas defense that really turned things around, created a couple of open floor opportunities. You see the lay-in from Relaford, and Kansas has held Ohio State without a field goal. In fact, the Buckeyes 0 for 7 here in the second half, and you see what they've done point differential-wise in the second half. That's basically been a result of their defense, and they have turned that up a notch here to start this half. Ohio State has been a little quick on the trigger the last couple of possessions. I think they need to make sure they get that ball moving side to side and get something good here out of that timeout. First half was really about the three-point shooting. Can somebody on Ohio State knock down a perimeter shot here to stem the tide? Going back to the first half, they've gone five and a half minutes without a basket. Ravenel gets it back to Kraft inside Sollinger. Flip shot short. Ohio State really misses the presence of Deshaun Thomas as a guy who's a perimeter shooter. Ravenel is a role player. Oh! And Robinson makes it a three-point game. A 12 to 2 stretch here for the Jayhawks. Buford able to lean in and get the foul call on Withy. That's Taylor feeding him. With a little extra sound effect to go with it. Jayhawks have gotten back into it. Here's a little virtual madness. We're going to highlight Thomas Robinson doing a nice job. Rim running, we call it. Running to the front of the rim. When the ball is reversed, he seals his defender, Deshaun Thomas, and then a nice pass over the top. 
Buford. By Tyshawn Taylor. As Buford hitting the first free throw after the Withy foul. And Ohio State has brought in for the first time Amir Williams, the 6'11 freshman from Birmingham, Michigan. He was huge in that victory over Syracuse. Remember the quick fouls for Jared Sullinger. Williams came in without really having played much at all in this tournament and made several big plays to keep Ohio State above water. So he gives him a shot blocking presence to help out Sullinger defending Robinson. That is Elijah Johnson hitting the three point jumper. This is Kansas at its best, execution-wise, going into Robinson, spreading the floor, getting the ball side to side, and now starting to knock down some shots. Sullinger 0 for 5 in this half, squeezing through, getting it out to Buford. And a lane violation called. Three seconds on Williams, who first time down that end of the floor. Is called for the violation. Ohio State with one made basket now in the last 10 plus minutes. I'm not sure how long Fat Mata can keep Deshaun Thomas on the bench. I mean, everything they do offensively is predicated on him being able to space the floor and bring these Kansas big men away from the hoop. Right now, they're just camped in the lane. He's been down for three minutes with the three fouls. Robinson shot off the rim, and Buford brings it up for the Buckeyes. Sullinger, that's a two, way off. Now 0 for 6 in the half. Johnson driving in on Kraft, and he got it to go. The game is tied. Back from 13 down. And right now, Jared Sullinger visiting with the officials. He thought he got fouled. And you're Deshaun Thomas checking in. Thad Mata sensing he's got to get his leading score in the tournament back on the floor because the Buckeyes are clearly now out of rhythm. They're pressing, they're not executing offensively, they're taking quick shots, and you can sense a little frustration starting to seep in here. Kansas can take the lead on this trip. Last led at two to nothing, 25 seconds in. Robinson, pass, deflected by Williams. Chased down by the Buckeyes. Kraft, short, no, good shot. That's a three, his second of the game. Too much help from Tyshawn Taylor. You can't leave Kraft wide open. You want to help on penetration, but you've got to dig and get back. I thought Taylor really got caught in the lane there. Hey, Kraft breaks an eight and a half minute stretch without a basket as Johnson's in trouble. Buford was able to take it away at last. And the Smith dunk will not count. It's country music's party of the year. Don't miss all your favorite stars live from Las Vegas. The Academy of Country Music Awards tomorrow only CBS. So Johnson commits his fourth after having it taken away from him. And that's big. Now Tehan comes into the game. He has not been able to get anything going offensively in this tournament. But Tehan, a very capable three-point shooter, made 50 of them on the year. Just three of 15 in the tournament coming into this game, though. There's Thomas. Tapped up and in by Sullinger. Well, the penetration of Thomas pulled Jeff Withy away, and Bill Self wants to call a timeout. But Withy went after that shot attempt, and that left Sullinger free on the glass. The three by Kraft, the tap in by Sullinger. Ohio State up five. Great doesn't just happen. Great doesn't quit when the sun goes down. Great gets up and tries again. Great makes the most of every moment. Great goes the extra mile. We believe we should all strive for great because to us, good enough is never enough. Let's make it great. Thomas Robinson, unanimous first team AP All-America. The first since Blake Griffin to be unanimous. 
we said he needed to really dominate on the inside in this game. He's the only real advantage physically that Kansas has in this matchup. And he's gotten free for a couple of hoops here in the second half, and it's really changed the tone here, of course, along with the Kansas defense. Young back on the floor for the Jayhawks. Again, Tehan out there with Johnson down. Oh! And Withy stays with it. Boy, that's such good execution because they lift the weak side. They get the defenders from the weak side up above the foul line, and that leaves that lob pass available for Withy over the top. This is where Thomas can be so effective in the pick and pop action. Kraft, not this time when he made that three point shot. It's the first basket they had made after 11 straight misses. And now the Jayhawks could tie it with the three. T hand, though. I think they got Deshaun Thomas. That they do. Look at the field goal percentage in this half for Ohio State. Two out of 14. That is that is it. Uh, and this is coming off of Kansas holding Carolina in the second half last Sunday. The 22% at all-time NCAA tournament low for Carolina. And more importantly, Thomas did commit that foul, his fourth. So he's back to the bench. And he might be there a while. But with Sullinger unable to, to get anything going in the paint, well, where does Ohio State score now? That is Ravenel making a nice block on Young. Ravenel, who started and played for Sullinger in that regular season matchup back in December when Kansas won at home. Lindsay Smith hits the three pointer. Huge shot for Ohio State. They needed that one desperately. Well, he's been doing that all year long for him, Steve. At Key times, he'll come up and make a big no, shot for him. No, no. Now, where does Kansas get its offense? That'll stay with the Jayhawks. 17 seconds on the shot clock. Well, that's the man right there, Thomas Robinson. Kansas dominating points in the paint thus far, and they're trying to go to him now. No double team. With a double team here. And Robinson has got Sullinger to hit the open jump shot. That's a tough cover for Jared Sullinger. If he gets involved in the pick and roll, has to move laterally. And then Thomas has the ability to stop and make that little 12 to 15 foot jump shot. I'd expect Kansas to perhaps make that a regular part of its offense if Thomas can't catch it in the post. Robinson has 14 in the game. And that's off the foot of a Kansas player. As Withy is coming back in for Young. Young has done a nice job. He set a great pick down at that end for Robinson on that jump shot. He's been very active, as usual, all over the offensive glass. Four offensive boards and a defensive one as well. Young well, just creates extra possessions. Exactly. And he's a guy who understands his role, Steve. He doesn't typically try to do more than he's capable of. Ball play here for Ohio State. High pick and roll. There it is Kraft. Oh! And tapped out to Withy. Into the hands of Taylor. Dehan. Gets it down low. Robinson is hacked. That is Kraft's second. And you can get the latest gear for your team at the official store of the NCAA. Find great hoops merchandise at NCAA.com slash shop. I feel like Kansas is right where it wants to be defensively now. Withy and Robinson both on the floor. Withy with five blocks. He has made Sullinger's life miserable. And Kraft, I think, is going to have to be more aggressive offensively. Kraft and Buford 
Yes, particularly with Thomas on the bench, those two have to actively seek shots now, something that Kraft normally doesn't do. 46, 43, that's the first time Kansas has shot free throws off of a foul on a shot attempt. They had the one and one in the first half. Hard to imagine, it took 30 minutes in the game before they were fouled in the act of shooting. Well, both of these teams do a pretty good job of defending without fouling. They pride themselves on that. They're usually in good position and don't come over the top much. Smith again, not this time. Battle for it, and it's Robinson. Spinning away from Kraft for a moment. And that pass, too hard to handle, right at the feet of Relaford. And a 14th Kansas turnover. Boy, if they were patient, they would have gotten something good there because there was a cross match in transition. There were mismatches all over the floor. With he just needed to make a good pass to swing that ball, they would have gotten something good on the weak side. But a little impatience there offensively. Panic just a bit. Yep. He hot potatoed it instead of just taking his time. So an empty trip for the Jayhawks. But when you defend the way Kansas has defended pretty much all season and certainly in the tournament, you feel like you can find a way to get a stop when you need it. Double team hard now on Sullinger. Good look. Whips it over to Kraft. I think Aaron has to be ready to step into a shot on that pass. Keeper from the lane. That's a huge shot by the senior. It was all smiles coming back down the floor after that one. He's got 15. Yeah, I like the confidence and freedom he's playing with, Jim. I've seen it a few times this year where he's just in a rhythm and flow, and that's been the case tonight. Sondra trying to reach around, and he's going to be called for this one. His first. Now, we talked about it early. William Buford is really the X factor for this team. When he scores well, they tend to play well. Remember that game at Michigan State? I think you were there. He was terrific. He was amazing. Just took over that game offensively. That is Tehan, Connor Tehan, who has a championship ring. He was a member of that 2008 Kansas title team. And that's the first bench points tonight from either team. Down the floor, goes baseline and lays it in, down the one. What a terrific move that was to control the ball and then give a little pausing, parking, put him away move. My goodness, that was special there. Travis Relaford makes the play that really forces Mata to call the timeout. With 7.42 to go in the game. It was Ohio State by nine at halftime, but look at Kansas in the second half as we look in at the Superdome, beautiful sight, such a symbol of this city since Katrina back in 2005, and the NCAA committee wanted to bring the Final Four back to the first available date it could, and this is an absolutely spectacular sight for the Final Four. And it's great to have it back here again. 73,300 strong, the second largest crowd ever for an NCAA tournament game, second only to last year's Final Four in Houston. And Kraft out to Sullinger. Jump shot long. Four for 16 now for Sullinger, and that outside shot so important in this game against Withy. Hasn't been able to get it going. Withy tips it up, and again, the Jayhawks had a trip to take the lead for the first time since the opening seconds. Buford. Smith Jr., and that rattles out. Sellinger picks up his second. We have the under eight timeout coming up. Ball will belong to Kansas out of the break. Jayhawks down one.
Thursday, TV's number one new drama, all new. First son of interest, Jim Caviezel. Stars Thursday, only on America's number one network, CBS. I'll be locked in. Mr. Finch and Mr. Reese. <laughs> you don't miss it. <laughs> Unless you got a game. There is Sellinger's one out of eight in this half. Kansas really picking up where it left off against North Carolina in the second half last week. They ended that game on a 12-0 run, but their defense in the second half, they held the Tar Heels to 20% shooting. It was really something. And with Thomas on the bench, what it's done is it's really clogged everything up for Ohio State. No floor spacing, nobody who can take anybody off the dribble to create a shot. I think the Buckeyes have to look for Buford off of staggered screens. He's been hot tonight. They've got to look for an advantage somehow to score because Sullinger's not giving them one. Well, Thomas has been down since the 11.30 mark when he picked up his fourth. Tehan. lead. Thomas. Well, Thomas Robinson, I thought, was going to grab hold of it. Unable to. I think Sullinger got a hand on that one, Jim, from behind. Deep post oh. position. There is Sullinger banking it in. That's when he's at his best. Not trying to back a guy down, but seal him and then go to work right after he catches it. He's got 11 on the game. He averages 17 a game. Actually, about 18. Looking hard for it inside, and coming out with it is Smith up ahead to Buford. Taylor trying to defend, no chance. That's the first fast break basket of the game for Ohio State. And it couldn't have come at a better time. The points so difficult to come by right now. Everybody went to the offensive glass for Kansas. Robinson draws the foul. You guys called for Buford to step up. He's got 17 in the game. Get complete coverage of the Division I women's basketball tournament at NCAA.com slash Final Four. Ravenel has been hit with his second foul. So Robinson, who led the nation in double-doubles with 26, set the Kansas single-season mark, breaking Drew Gooden's record. Gooden Helping take Kansas to the Final Four back in 2002, 10 years ago down in Atlanta. 15 points, six rebounds. As you saw Thomas, Deshaun Thomas still sitting down at the 546 mark. Back-to-back -back buckets by Ohio State, by Stad Mata, a little time to continue to allow Deshaun Thomas to sit. You get that bucket inside from Sullinger. You get the breakout from Buford. You're up five. It's a four-point game. You got a chance now to perhaps not have to bring Thomas back until under the four-minute media timeout. Mismatch here. Kevin Young trying to defend Sullinger. Here's Buford. He's had a hand. Sullinger trying to go up with it. And Young got a piece of the hand. Tomorrow on 60 Minutes, is sugar toxic? Well, you'll hear from a doctor who says it's causing an American health crisis. That's tomorrow on 60 Minutes, only CBS. Young's third foul, Sullinger to shoot two. That opportunity, guys, was created because Sullinger passed it quickly out of the double team. Yeah. And when he was able to get it to the weak side, Buford had a shot, and he was still mismatched on Young and beat him to the offensive glass. And the reason that pass was available was because Withy is on the bench. Young just too small for exactly. Sollinger, so they brought the double, and Sollinger can throw right over the top of Young, whereas Withy, with those long arms, has bothered him all night. Lead is back to six. And showing his stuff. He's tough down there. He's got the jump hook over both shoulders, and he has really picked up his aggressiveness here in the second half. Big time physical presence out there. He sure is. 18 points now, 10 coming in this half. And they're still matched up Kevin Young on Sullinger. Kraft diving for it. 
and it's going to stay with Ohio State. They never, they said Kraft never touched it as he was chasing it out of bounds. That's right. And the official had a good look on it, and he's exactly right. Kraft did not retouch it. Bill Self is furious over the Kansas fans, but it looked to me like the officials got it right there. They did. It was an awkward looking play because normally you don't dive after the ball unless you were the last one to touch it. Unless you're Aaron Kraft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Bounce pass to Sanger. Oh. What a block by Young. Kansas comes racing out with it. Johnson behind the back and hits the shot. Down to two. That was a beautiful move with the little crab dribble in the open court. He kept that dribble alive until he saw the lane open up. Johnson with the four fouls. Back in the game now, Deshaun Thomas with the four will also return for Ohio State. And again, it's on Young. That's his fourth. And here comes Thomas sitting down seven minutes and 21 seconds since collecting his fourth. And that will send Young out with his fourth on the other side with a returns. Thomas is just three for 11 tonight, but he's created some offensive rebounds just with his activity and his shot taking because he's loosened up the Kansas defense. He's also one of those guys, Clark, you know, he's not shy. It doesn't matter that he's three, three for 11. He's he's still, he still thinks he's hot. He's always confident. <laughs> and he's another guy you have to concern yourself with if you're Kansas when he's on the floor. Crap. Well defended by the Jayhawks. Taylor, no. Rebound, Sullinger. Foul on Ohio State. I'm not sure who I it think, was. I think they got Sullinger for clearing out on the rebound. And we've got the under four timeout. Coming Sunday, April 15th, a new police drama from Robert De Niro and Jane Rosenthal, NYC 2-2, only CBS. Now here, watch the foul call here. It's, they call it on Buford, 44. He must have nudged Thomas Robinson in the back, as you indicated, Jim, during our break. It'll be a one-and-one one for Sullinger, Robinson. Sullinger could have been called for a foul on the shot attempt by Tyshawn Taylor. And now a chance to tie it again. Kansas has really taken over the rebound situation in this second half as well, just like they did against Carolina last week. Tar Heels were the best rebounding team in the country coming into that game, and Kansas took it to them. They're doing the same thing to Ohio State right now. 34 to 23 edge on the glass for the Jayhawks. It's been about the energy here in the second half from Kansas on the glass and defensively. Ohio State has shown in, its, in the tournament the ability to execute late and make big plays, and they typically try to play through Sullinger here. Good reestablishment of the post position. Little hook shot, no. And tapped out to Elijah Johnson. Robinson blocked by Sullinger. Excellent defense by Jared Sullinger. He broke contact just enough to be free himself to block that shot. And Thomas. Again, Kansas has a trip to take the lead. Inside of three minutes. Over to Rutherford, and he's fouled heading to the line. That is on Sullinger, his third. Thomas has had so many good looks in this game, and he's been on that back iron all night from the start, Steve. He's, you're exactly right. And he had been shooting it so well coming into this game in the tournament. Relaford to shoot two. 
And because of his misses, Deshaun Thomas I'm talking about, Kansas has been able to keep that defense really in the paint, and they've been able to clog things up. If he could have just gotten one or two to go, it would have changed this whole game, but then the foul trouble really took him out of things. And then when you miss that corner three, it usually gives the opposition an opportunity to run when they cleanly the rebound. And there is Kansas in front. First lead since the opening minute. And scoring now the last seven points. Had trailed by 13 on five occasions. And Thomas will have a chance to go to the line to regain the lead as Withy has called for that. His second. You can see here Thomas just looking to try to create something. Just a slight bump of the body by Withy. Extremely slight. Yeah, it was very, <laughs> very, very slight. And Thomas took a shot there. I don't know if he tweaked his ankle or looks like that's what he's trying to walk off. Pretty good free throw shoot. He's been 83% in the tournament from the line, 74% on the year. It just hasn't been a game where he's been able to get in the flow of things. He missed early a lot of shots, and then the foul trouble has been mounting. And now he has one more free throw. Sometimes, though, a guy who struggled gets a free throw or two to fall, and the basket gets a little bigger. Yeah, he's hobbling over to the bench. I think this is more offense, defense than injury. I don't even see a trainer over there. This is more about keeping him from getting that fifth foul, defending Robinson with Ravenel, and then they'll try to get Thomas back into the game when Ohio State gets the ball back. Stolen by Kraft. Kraft shielding and putting it up and in. Aaron Kraft with a huge moment in this game. Set the single season Ohio State record for steals. Gets the steal and the basket. Mine was earned off Vietnam in 1968. Over the South Pacific in 1943. I got mine in Iraq 2003. USAA Auto Insurance is often handed down from generation to generation because it offers a superior level of protection and because USAA's commitment to serve the military, veterans, and their families is without equal. Begin your legacy. Get an auto insurance quote. USAA. We know what it means to serve. Kansas with one timeout left. Jim Nance here with Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, Tracy Wolfson in New Orleans as we play the final 221 to determine Kentucky's opponent on Monday night. Kentucky a winner earlier on this floor, 69-61. They had beaten Louisville in the regular season, 69-62. Almost an identical score. It sure was, and that game not quite as close as that score ind indicated, but clearly ironic that it was almost exactly the same. And now Kansas has to come down and get a good shot. Got to get the ball inside to Robinson. Get the ball swung, get it moving. Taylor waits, and he is able to get that shot to drop. Great body control. Boy, a tough, tough shot there. My goodness. Tyshawn Taylor, but that's what he's capable of. And at the other end, Steve, it's about playing through Sullinger here in the half court for Ohio State. Deshaun Thomas did not re-enter the offense-defense substitution, catching Ohio State without him being able to get back in the game. Tap no, and tapped out. Taylor has it, Taylor Clifford, and he is hit hard by Ravenel, who commits his third, and now Thomas, who's been standing at the far end of the bench, trying to loosen up that leg, is coming back in. Nothing flagrant there, just a good hard foul on the ball by Ravenel. Relaford, a 64% foul shooter. He'll get two. A moment ago, he knocked down a pair to give Kansas its first lead since two zip. We saw his brother play in this NCAA tournament. His brother Trevor, who started for Alabama, which uh, got knocked out by Creighton in the second round game as Ravenel goes out. Thomas back in. 
137 to go, and we're tied. Kansas up one. They've had three lead changes in the last minute. Kansas switching the crosses on the perimeter. Relaford matched up with Kraft. Beautiful. Blocked by Withy. Johnson, no one cuts it off. Banks it in. And I love the aggressiveness from Johnson. Jayhawks' biggest lead of the game, and it comes with a minute and five seconds to play. Timeout, Ohio State. You know, Steve, in some ways reminiscent of the end of the Carolina game for Kansas. Stops and occasional yeah. runouts that have allowed them to get this lead. Now, they haven't stretched it out as far as they did, but the defense has been really solid for Kansas. And when they've had the opportunity, they've taken advantage of being able to get to the rim in the open court. If I'm Ohio State now, I still look for Deshaun Thomas. He's got Robinson on him. It's such a difficult matchup. They can space the floor with, with Thomas in some kind of a pick and pop situation and either get him a three point look or a drive to the hoop. Because Sullinger against Withy has not been an advantage for the I Buckeyes. I still think you've got to look in there, but Jared has to be willing to give it up quickly if he doesn't have a high quality shot. And that puts additional pressure on the Kansas defense. And then you've got to consider Buford as well, but that ball has to be, you at least have to attempt to throw it inside. Ohio State led by six with five minutes to play. That pass a little too first. Robinson has it. Kraft reaches in. And there was no foul call. He what was able. Play. In fact, he thought he might have a tie-up. What a play. The arrow would have belonged to Kansas anyway, but still without committing a foul, he saved the breakaway basket. Take a look at Aaron Kraft zeroing in on that ball, and he wow. raked it away cleanly. No foul. He just dug in there and kept Thomas Robinson for, from a sure layup. 52 seconds to go. And don't need to foul. No need. That's You've right. got to defend and then be ready to rebound. No reason to foul. It's only a one possession game. This is where Tyshawn Taylor looks to do it himself, Steve, because of his ability to hit the pull-up jumper off the dribble. Back to Withy. Banging bodies, and he traveled. No basket. Traveling call on Withy. Wow. I think that was the right call, though. It appeared as though he had a little bit of a bunny hop. Oh, I'm not so sure upon the second look. Nor was Withy. Wow. 25 seconds to go. Down three. Need to attack quickly. It doesn't have to be a three-point shot. Here is Thomas. Thomas for the tie. The shot, no. And it's off the foot of Withy, who tries to save it. Back to Ohio State. Thomas again. Put back by Buford with authority with nine seconds to play. Down to one. Ohio State fortunate. They were putting up threes faster than they had to. And Buford picked up the loose change. Knocks it down to one. Buckeyes called the last time out. Steve Clark set us up. All of your vital signs right there in front of you, Jim. Nine fouls on Ohio State. The next foul is a double bonus. One timeout plus possession arrow to Kansas. You're strong with the ball. Ohio State wants to pressure, try to force a mistake, then it's an immediate foul. And you've got to foul quickly because of the fact that you don't have any timeouts left. Exactly. That means the foul means two free throws at the other end. And now Fat Mata will be drawing something up in the timeout right now and telling his players, we don't have any timeouts left. We have to play under every condition. We've got to be ready for any situation here. And Ohio State has to make sure the ball is caught in front of them. Don't let a Kansas player get behind you for the long pass.
Jones with the opportunity, if you're Kansas, to throw the long ball if you think it's there. Let's see how they match up. It'll be Relaford to inbound. Whitney, really the best free throw shooter on the floor for Kansas. But I, I still think you want to get it to Johnson or Taylor. Yep. They got it in the hands of Taylor, and he's bumped right away by Smith. Only took 1.3 seconds. And it's a double bonus at the other end, two free throws. So Taylor, who has struggled mightily, shooting in domes, shooting from three. He will have two free throws, the senior from Hoboken, New Jersey. Eight for 13 in the NCAA tournament. But the senior, you mentioned it, Jim, the experience. I think he's the one you want on the line if you're Bill Self. And if you're Ohio State, again, you've got to play made or miss. You've got to push the ball and make your decision accordingly. Time and score. Two shots for the third team, All-America. Now, if he makes this one and it's a three-point lead, 8.3 seconds, still too much time to foul. I'm a big proponent of fouling six seconds or less with a three-point lead. Beyond that, you've got to put pressure on the inbounder and try to force a tough shot. And again, Ohio State, no timeouts. They have to react immediately. I would foul as they cross half court before they get there. Before they get into that shooting area, I think you foul. But that would be probably within, that would be under five or six seconds. Yeah. Kevin Young comes in for Kansas. Taylor stole the inbounds pass, but then throws it away, and Bill Self can't believe it. Wow. Wow. Stole it. The game was almost over. It would have been over. All you do is take care of the ball and see if somebody fouls you. He thought he had a layup and then threw it behind, but you don't even need to make that pass. Now you foul. And now you foul. definitely foul. Hey, Kraft tried to launch it like it was a shot, and it goes off the shot clock. It'll be... A one and one. That's the seventh team foul on Kansas. So Kraft will try to make the first and miss the second. Bill Self brings Withy into the game for rebounding purposes. And it's not easy, first of all, to make the first one. That's right. But it's also not easy to miss the second one in a way where it can stay alive. Yeah, exactly. You've got a chance to get an offensive rebound. Just but the first two. thing is knock down the first shot. Yes. Because you won't get a second one if you don't. Just 2.9. Seconds to go. Ohio State's hit its last 12 free throws. Got that one. And the reason a lot of teams don't foul in this situation is because a long rebound could lead to a three-pointer and a game-winning shot. Well, here we go, guys. It's all coming down to this. Kraft! They're going to say he left too soon. A lane violation on the shooter. Boy, he fired it up and took off. Yeah. Here's the inbounds pass to Kansas. Uncontested. They pull off the comeback, and the Jayhawks are moving on to Monday night. Sullinger in shock at midcourt. I don't even think Ohio State was ready for the inbound. They were in disarray. They were all arguing with the official. Kraft was staring at the official just like he is there. Take a look at the free throw again. He throws it up there and clearly crosses the line. I think it's a good call from the official. And then in the ensuing chaos, Kansas just inbounded and ran the clock out. Yeah, Ohio State wasn't ready for the ball they to be inbounded. Not, they were not. They were still, as Steve just said, they were locked into what had happened on the prior call. The official put the ball in the hands of the Jayhawk inbounder, and that ended it. A Kansas team that came back from 10 down against Purdue to make the Sweet 16 comes back from 13 to make the championship game matchup. Kraft was clearly moving before the ball hit the rim. And then again, Ohio State was still looking around about that call. 
And they just had the inbound. No one near him. No foul. Game over. How about the resilience of this Kansas squad? They looked dead in the water in the first half. Down 13. But they came back with their defense. Kansas and Kentucky met back on November 15th at Madison Square Garden. Game two of the year for each team. And now they'll meet in the final game of the season. Kentucky and Kansas will collide Monday night for the national championship. We'll be back to New Orleans in a moment. Welcome back to New Orleans, everyone. Kansas has beaten Ohio State to advance to Monday night's championship game as we welcome you back to the Superdome and continue live from New Orleans, Louisiana. A reminder, coming up next for many of you, your late local news. CBS Sports coverage begins at 9 o'clock Eastern time on Monday evening with prelude to a championship followed by the NCAA title game between Kansas and Kentucky. Right now, Jim Nance standing by on the court with the victorious Kansas Jayhawks. Jim. All right, folks. Here we are with the Kansas Jayhawks on to the championship game on Monday night. Coach Self, your team came back from 13 down on five different occasions in that first half. How did you do it? I don't know. We were awful. Thomas will tell you the first half. No energy, tight. Second half, we came out and, and played so much better, so much more energy. Had a couple possessions where we didn't score. We actually had great possessions and on layups and stuff. But bottom line with this team, if we defend and if we rebound, good things will happen, and we certainly did that second half. It's got to be one of your most satisfying wins to get this team turned around at halftime. Do you feel that way? Well, I do, but it's not me. These guys turned it around at halftime. You know, Thomas labored the first half. Ty did. You know, we were flat, but we came out, and these guys were awesome. We played through our bigs the second half. Thomas, how about that comeback, which you were such a big part of? What does it mean to you to be playing for a national championship? It means everything in the world, man. We worked so hard, you know, overcoming all the expectations, and we're here now. You know, there were a number of times where you guys would pull even with Ohio State. They would respond, go back in front. You'd come back again. But in the end, like what you did against North Carolina, you guys were more resilient in the end. It's just been our whole, you know, our whole thing all year, coming back from being down. I don't like doing it, but, you know, for some reason, my team is pretty good when we're down. Did you ever think back on November the 15th when you met up in New York with Kentucky, you would see them again? And what about that game Monday night? I'll be ready. He'll be ready, he says. All right, congratulations. We'll see you Monday night. If you look outside at the Superdome all night, there's a recessed blue lighting, and it'll be all blue inside on Monday night. We'll be back to New Orleans in a moment.